What's up guys, hope we're doing well. I just got back from my first ever overseas mission trip. I just got back from Togo, Africa. I was there for about 10 days. I will never be the same person I was because of this trip. Long story short, we are so blessed. Americans, we have it so good. I will never complain about anything ever again in my life because of this trip. Some of the things I saw were crazy. It was wild. Some of the prisons that I saw, I still tear up thinking about the people who I saw in those prisons. It's wild. But let me just set everything up for you because every day I was there I did a video and I put all those videos together in one long cut for you guys. I had a great time. I truly had a great time and I want to go back. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I went with my dad who's been to Togo five times already and my pastor, Pastor Varel, who's also been to Togo five times. I also went with Mama Lynn. Mama Lynn is 88 years old. She's lived in Togo for about 13 years and she's known. She's known in the Togo community over there, in the prisons, in the hospital. They know this one. Those were all the Americans on the trip. On the Togo side we had Joel, who was our interpreter, our main interpreter. He interpreted all the French for us. But sometimes we needed another interpreter to go from French to Cavier. It was wild. Joel's father is actually a pastor, Pastor Joseph and Emily. You'll see them in this video. And our driver for the whole trip, his name was Michelle. And he came in crucial during this trip. I'm not even playing. Also joining us on the Togo side was Pastor Adam, Pastor Adam, who was a pastor from North Togo. He's Cavier. Don't mess with Pastor Adam. That's all I'm going to say. I can tell you some things. You will be scared. But without any further ado, my first ever mission trip overseas. I'll go Africa. I hope you enjoy and I hope you guys consider going on a mission trip because I will tell you this right now If every American went on a mission trip, we would have no problem in this country I guarantee it because I cannot even live my life the same ever again because of this trip I hope you enjoy day one of my Togo mission trip after getting bodied at the airport We finally made it through customs and my look at my dad right there My dad was greeted by Emily and that's my pastor Pastor Burrell and that's Mama Lynn That's who I came on this trip with we were greeted by the people who were going to take us to our hotel. And before we went on this hotel, we had a, you know, we had a little prayer. You know, you got to get the prayer in, obviously. So we, we prayed over this mission trip. We're going to be here for about 10 days in Togo, Africa. We packed up the car and we went to our first destination, which was our hotel. Look at my dad. Look at this man. Bruh. This is my first time in Africa, though. Look at the city. The city is gorgeous. Anyways, we got to our hotel, as you can see. Leviticus, stop lying. We're out here. That's Joel. He'll be our interpreter for a lot of the time we're here. But yeah, we just got situated in our hotel. Look at my room. They put me on the top floor. Look at this. Hold up. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yago. Yeah, so this is where I stayed day one. Okay, bear chilling on the couch. You see him. What y'all think, though? African hotel. Have you ever seen an African hotel? After this, we were so beat, we needed food immediately. Mama Lynn said, don't worry about cooking today, Emily. We're going to go out to one of my favorite places by the beach. Or the ocean, rather. Wow. Can I get to tell no one in the comments? This is the Atlantic Ocean. Wow. But look at the, look at the country, though. What y'all think of Togo? This is the country. So we got to the hotel. And honestly, like, I can't even lie. The food here was pretty good. Can't even hold it. Look at Mama Lynn. Look at me, though. Stop playing. You see, you see me. I was the only one who got the chicken. All right, everyone else got the fish. I'm not going to lie. This was Togo style chicken. It was hot fire. But after this, we literally were so tired. We immediately went back home and to sleep. We got a long drive tomorrow. I'm going to keep you guys updated. Follow along. Stop playing. Day two of my Togo mission trip. We started off with a breakfast. I saw this lizard right here. Wait for it. And then we were on our way. We had a lot of traveling today. Today was actually another travel day. Right here, Adam's blessing us, giving us a prayer right before we take off. And I'm telling you, we literally drove and drove and drove and drove and drove today i think we drove for a little bit over eight hours today we stopped at the rock hotel for lunch and i got this really great fish i don't even know what type of fish it is i also got this sport active i compared to like a lemon izzy it was hot fire as well look at oh here's my uh fish fish and chips uh i think it's called fritz and french Bruh, tell me why I learned no French before coming on this trip. Adam got some soup 
And I think after this, we were literally back on the road. Here's Mama Lin. I think she got some onion soup. She was not able to finish it all though, but we were back on the road immediately. We made our way through Attack Pop, Attack Pai Mei. Listen, I don't know how to pronounce things. I'm learning. It was so interesting though, seeing all of the scenery and like, look at this, this is still Africa. This is still Togo. Like it's, it's crazy the amount of scenery changes that are possible. We made it to our hotel that we're staying at though. And from here, we're gonna be here for two days. We checked in. Tomorrow though will not be a travel day. It's going down. Here's my room at the hotel that we're gonna be staying at for the next couple days. You see Bear, right? You see him, stop playing. Look, look at this, I'm learning French, stop playing. Don't make me learn it all together this whole week. Say I won't do it. After we checked out the room though, we then headed over to see some missionary friends of Mama Lin, the Aldermans. There is Jeanette hugging Mama Lin right there. And honestly, it was just a great time. They had some fire food at this place. That, that meatloaf was literally fire. I, I can't even hold you. And we just shared some stories. And it was just a great time all around. We're getting ready for the Bible conference tomorrow. It's going down. I think we're going to be there for over 12 hours. Please pray for me. I don't even know what the heck is happening. Please pray. But yeah, that was day two. That's Randy. He's the man. He teaches at the Bible Project over here. The Bible Institute, rather. The Bible Institute. Day two in the books. Day three of my Togo mission trip. Day three was all about the Bible conference, and we were immediately greeted by Togolese pastors who knew my pastor Burrell and my dad. Wow, no one knew me. I was sad. But I met some people. Look at this. After greeting some people for a while outside, we eventually made our way inside and worship started immediately. That's how people do things down there. You start off with worship. And you know, we had the match too now. Stop playing. My dad started this conference off giving us a basic overview of really Christianity from the beginning to where we are right now with the help of Joel interpreting for him the whole time. Joel is a beast, by the way. Stop lying. After this, we broke for lunch and we had this delicious dish. I have no idea what this meat is. I'm kind of afraid. Mama Lynn wanted me to get a picture of this pastor's family. I had to oblige. After which, right back into praising. After this, it was Pastor Burrell's time to take over and we started with hermeneutics. Basically, how do you study the Bible? And this is the same way he trained me how to study the Bible. Basically, you just ask simple questions. Who, what, when, where, why? And how. So we were basically instructing these Togolese pastors on how to study the Bible so they could go back to their congregations and teach them the same. This right here was a demonstration on faith. You can say you have faith in the chair to hold you, but you don't demonstrate it till you sit down. From here, we went into a study of eschatology or the study of end times. And I gotta say, this is some very intricate stuff that we were teaching, but I think they were able to grasp a lot of it. Honestly, I still got to learn a lot of this stuff myself. At the conclusion, we were able to give out some shirts to some pastors and everyone else who was around. And we also were able to give out some ties as well. For whatever reason, people kept wanting to take pictures with me. Like I'm used to it, but it was kind of weird. After that, we packed up and we got dinner. We went to one of Mama Lynn's favorite places and I got a pizza and it was good. And I got a Sport Active Stop Playing. This is the go-to drink while I'm in Togo. Sport Active, please come to America. What are y'all doing? Here's my dad blessing the food right here. I'm not gonna lie, I literally ate my whole pizza. Stop playing with me. Day three in the books. Tomorrow, I think we are on our way to the prison. I'm not gonna be able to film as much tomorrow but we'll see what I can get. Stay tuned. Bro, did y'all like and follow yet? What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? Day four of my Togo mission trip. Today, we went to our first prison, first of three, and I gotta say, this was the most eye-opening experience. We went with the same Togolese pastors that were at the Bible conference, and I was not allowed to film at all in the prisons, but I was able to get permission to film where they were making the food for the prisoners. 
And this is where all the food is made. They literally have no electricity. They have to make all their food for the prisoners by fire. I'll just let this play out because I thought this was pretty magical to look at. After looking at the preparations for the food, we went and we got the suitcases to give the clothing to all the prisoners. Now, here's something you guys need to know. Each of the cells in this prison had about 20 to 50 people in each cell with minimal sunlight. Yet these people were still praising Jesus louder than any American church I've ever been to. We are truly blessed. I was able to give my testimony. We sang some songs with them. And it was a great time in the prison. And afterwards, we had the same meals that we had prepared for the prisoners. It was a great time. And honestly, this was the most eye-opening experience of my trip thus far. We took a picture in front of the sign they had for Mama Lynn. We said our goodbyes. And honestly, that was day four. Except we had a little bit extra planned as well. We met up with a friend of Mama Lynn, an imam. Yeah, that's right. He's an imam. And we just shared stories. And at the end of sharing stories, we actually were able to sing him a couple of our songs that we sang for the prisoners as well. God is good. My God is good. God is so good. My God is good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Day five of my Togo mission trip. This one was actually in Benin. We had to get a visa to go to Benin. Look at the scenery because we were on our way to an orphanage after what seemed like forever we made it to our hotel but we couldn't even rest because the children were going to sleep soon we immediately had to go to the orphanage we arrived at the orphanage and honestly this was my favorite day of this mission trip so far upon arrival we were greeted by mama phoebe she's the person who runs this whole place I was able to give away some crayons thanks to some suggestions on Twitter. Shouts out to you guys. I also brought some gum, which was a huge hit here at the orphanage. Here's a video of Mama Phoebe and my dad. They're the same age. Here's some children doing some schoolwork. One of the first things we did was sit down with Mama Phoebe and her husband and just discuss, how have you been? What's going on? After this, we got a grand tour of the whole place, beginning with the youngest children here. Look at this cutie. All in all, they have about 77 children at this orphanage. One just left. We kept meeting some of the younger children and this guy right here followed me around just about the whole time I was here. I never got his name though. I'm gonna have to come back and get it. Some of the children started doing this dance right here. Look at this. I honestly feel like the fist bump is universal. Like, anywhere you go, children should know how to do this. Am I lying? I stumbled across someone playing the drums and I immediately had to get on it. After this, they sang for us and we sang for them. You already know. They actually knew this song in their language, so we were actually singing together. After the conclusion of singing and giving a brief word, we handed out some jewelry, which was a big hit amongst the girls and the guys. 
And then we just chilled for a bit with the children, just hung out, had a good time. Like I said, this was my favorite day of the mission trip thus far. I'm gonna have to come back. Like, I really wanna come back. And hopefully this inspires some of you to go out to some orphanages near you or abroad. After we were done handing out all the jewelry, they sang us a goodbye song. And that was day five in the books. Day six of my Togo mission trip. We started off today with a message from Pastor Burrell on how to not be discouraged after a great victory. And we needed it, because look at it, we got a flat tire. The enemy was trying to win. Luckily, our driver, Michelle, knew what to do. He had us back up and running in no time. Today, we were on our way to the hospital in Mongo, but before we got there, we had to drop all of our bags off at the hotel. This guy here actually remembered my dad from the last time he was here on his mission trip in Togo. After dropping off our bags, we went straight to the hospital. I will say this, I will never take for granted American hospitals ever again in my life. We met with the guy over the whole hospital and he was new. He didn't actually remember Mama Lynn from last time, but that didn't matter. We explained what we were trying to do. We were gonna hand out some bracelets to people and just pray for them and encourage them in their situations. And that's exactly what we did. We went door to door and we basically said, Jesus loves you. He has not forgotten about you. Can we pray for you? And most of them said yes, but there were a few people that said no. This woman right here asked us actually to witness to her daughter. So we did. One of the encouraging things that I have to remember is that this is Pastor Burrell's first time doing this at this hospital. Sometimes we forget that pastors are people too. They have the same emotions and nerves. Like I said, everyone was not receptive to being prayed for. This hospital had a large Muslim population, but that's okay. We prayed for the people who wanted us to pray for them and I believe we reached a lot of people. It's just so crazy to translate these hospitals with the hospitals that we have back in the United States. It's wild to me. This is also the first time I saw a white person in Togo. She was the head of finance. Look at these rooms though. These are rooms in hospitals, bruh, bruh. This was a full-time missionary who we met on site. All in all, we handed out about 100 bracelets and prayed for that many people as well. It was truly a great experience. This guy right here was actually hit by a car. That's why he was in here. He was hit by a car. The day was just a great experience overall, and it felt good to reach out to people and really encourage them in their situations, what they were going through. The stark contrast between the hospitals here in Togo and the hospitals in America just made me thankful. Here you have to bring your own clothes and your own food. And if you don't have anyone to do that, you don't eat. Speaking of eating, at the conclusion, we had dinner. This was our only meal of the day because we were traveling so much. But that was day six in the books. Day seven tomorrow. Day seven of my Togo mission trip. This started out with Pastor Adam blessing our trip as we made our way to our second prison of our trip. This was the prison in Mango, and the first thing we did was meet with the warden just to make sure we were all clear on what we were going to be doing. Once again, I was not allowed to film inside, but I did get permission to film where they made the food. This prison was smaller than the prison we went to before, so their equipment to make food was smaller as well. The warden did have to dip out, but he did let us take a selfie with him in front of the jail before he left. Inside the prison, we shared our testimony with one woman and 22 inmates who were in for severe cases. I also was able to share my testimony to over a hundred people and we sang some songs with them and passed out some toothbrushes and toothpaste for most of the inmates. We also were able to feed them a meal. This is probably the only meat that they would be getting all year long in this meal. Some of the women also prepared some Bisap, which is a really great Togo drink that you guys need to immediately look up. But again, this is probably the only time they would be getting a drink like this all year during this banquet that we put on for them. One of the things that the prisoners told us was that they were in need of Bibles. They didn't really have that many Bibles. So when I do come back, that is something that I will be fundraising for on my return. After dodging some rain for a bit and getting all the food ready, we were able to distribute the food to everyone and we got some BSAP too now, stop playing. Listen, it goes like this, Sport Actif is number one, BSAP might be number two, stop playing. The city prosecutor made an appearance, this is a very important person. But this is the food we ate, 
We ate the same thing that the prisoners ate, and once again, we were on our way on the road. We decided to get back on the road and make our way back to Kara today, so we didn't have as far as a drive to the last prison we'll be going to in Sokade. We were back at Hotel Kara, but there was one problem. They didn't have any rooms. Luckily, they still had some bungalows, though, so we copped a couple of bungalows, and that's where we'll be staying tonight. We went to dinner, but I went to this supermarket because I hadn't been to a supermarket yet. Bought some cookies. Stop playing with me. The cookies were pretty good, though. Look at the selection, though. Take it all in. From here, we were back to Mama Lin's favorite restaurant, and I gotta say, it's quickly becoming one of my favorites as well. There were some Asians celebrating a birthday, and they gave us some birthday cake. Tonight, I had the same ham pizza I had before and a hot dog. I'm keeping it simple. Oh, yes, and of course, sport active. Day seven in the books, only one more day left. Day eight of my Togo mission trip. Today was our last day of witnessing, and we loaded up the van, and we were headed to Soka Day today. As we were fueling up, these kids greeted us. This was common throughout our whole trip. Everyone's trying to sell you something. We were on our way to the Soka Day prison, and unfortunately, this was the day that I got the least amount of footage, mainly because we were not able to meet with the warden, which is always imperative when you go to these prisons. Technically, I wasn't even supposed to be filming this footage right here, but I just snapped some stuff before I asked permission. Always film before asking permission. Big brain energy. Here's some shots of the prison, but inside we did the same thing we did at all the other prisons. Except for this time we were rushed because we got there at the same time they were supposed to be eating their food. So we shared some brief messages, I got that picture with the guards, and we were on our way. And we were effectively done with our mission trip. All that was left now was to drive to Lome and make sure we caught our flight. But before we do that, we had to eat. We went to this hotel by suggestion, and I gotta say, bruh, the food took literally like an hour and 15 minutes to come out. Here's my dad with his fish sandwiches. You see my BSAP, stop playing. We were on the road again. Here's a video of some fufu. That's important for tomorrow's video. We actually had an escort on our way. It was the weirdest thing ever. This police officer like escorted us 20 miles. Maybe he like watched my YouTube videos. I have no idea. But finally we made it in Lo May after about five hours of driving. First thing we did was stop at Joel's house. He actually lives in Lo May. We actually would come back here tomorrow for a meal that his family prepared. So definitely check out tomorrow's video. Here's Petra hugging Mama Lynn, Joel's youngest sister. Joel also plays the guitar, so he had to play some beats for us, stop playing. After that though, we headed to our hotel. We tried a new one this time because the first one we stayed at was not up to our standards really. We got situated and Joel recommended us go to Factory. And I gotta say, this was one of the best suggestions of the whole gosh darn trip. Joel hooked it up. Look at this, this is a great date night experience, stop playing. If I come back to Togo with my girlfriend slash fiance slash wife, we are going here. Look at this burger. This was the first food that really felt like I was in America. I'm not even playing. It was really good. Here's my dad blessing the food. I think he got some wings and so did Mama Lynn. Okay. And you already know, sport active on deck. Day eight in the books. Day nine of my Togo mission trip. This was the last day of our mission trip. And it started off by Mama Lynn passing out some gifts to some children downstairs. We met up with Joel and he took us to a spot where him and Mama Lynn used to go every day to get a croissant in the morning. We blessed the food and after that we were on our way to do some shopping. This is where we did all our shopping today. The artisanal, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, artisanal shopping center but they had some really dope stuff here. And I literally bought a lot of stuff, like way too much stuff. It was fun though, because you could haggle, right? And so you don't ever buy stuff what they tell you, okay? Always go in lower, sometimes disrespectfully lower, just to see what can happen. I didn't really haggle that much though, because I was in a kind of a hurry and it's like, bro, like pay the artist. I'm a creator, I understand. We went back to Joelle's place and that's Theophilia, his oldest sister. That's Emily and that's Joseph. They were preparing a meal for us called Fufu. I got a tour of their backyard where they have this banana tree right here. Look at it, look at the bananas. Look at the bananas. You can tell everyone in this family loves Mama Lynn. It's just known. 
They prepared a feast for us, and I was told every year they always look forward to eating Emily's feast. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. There's the foo-foo right there. We were all making fun of Pastor Burrell because apparently last year, this man ate this with a fork. This food is meant to be eaten with your hands, and we bullied him into doing it. Amen. This is meat, look at me, like a champ. It tasted really good though. Make sure you get it in the sauce. We were served dessert, which was also hot fire. And from here, we went and checked out Pastor Joseph's church that he preaches at. They were having a Bible conference, like a Baptist Bible conference there. But yeah, this was the last stop of our trip. We took a picture out front and then we said our goodbyes. Pastor Adam was not gonna be meeting us at the airport tomorrow. Joel will be. But yeah, guys, this is it. I hope you enjoyed watching all these videos. Maybe you're inspired to go on a mission trip. I'm putting a master cut on YouTube, so definitely check that out at youtube.com slash It'll be in landscape. Let's go.